Welcome to worship at El Pablito United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sherry Lyon, and today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Jesus ate nothing at all during those 40 days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led Jesus up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to Jesus, to you, I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple saying to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. Words of life, words of God. Did you ever watch that old TV game show, Let's Make a Deal? In that show, the audience dressed up in these kind of wacky outfits, hoping to be chosen by the host of the show to come up on stage. And one of the highlights of the show was then being allowed to trade what they had for what was unseen behind doors number one, two, and three. Sometimes they would win a fabulous prize. And other times they'd get what they called a zonk, a worthless prize. What tempts you to trade what you have for what might be behind the doors of our lives. What tempts you? I really think that life is full of possibilities and pitfalls. Let's think about that for a minute. Generally, things are not inherently bad. I mean, think about the internet. The internet has given us an amazing access to knowledge and at the same time amazing access to hate groups and misinformation what about that first car what possibility what freedom what responsibility and the pitfalls driving too fast going unhealthy places What about fast food or the dollar menu? The convenience, the possibility of getting something to go and the pitfall of too much fat and being over-processed. The temptations of life are around us every day. St. Anthony wrote, we can accept expect temptation with our very last breath. Temptation is everywhere, including in the Bible. The Bible begins with the story of Adam and Eve and the snake. We read about temptation. We even have a prayer. So why do we begin every Lenten season with the story of Jesus and his temptation. 
Well, I think we've sort of answered that already because temptation is universal. We all experience it, even Jesus. A theologian whom I like, whose writings I read, Leonard Sweet wrote this, the temptations or tests that the devil flung at Jesus after his 40 day fast in the wilderness weren't challenges to do something that Jesus wasn't supposed to do. They were really challenges for Jesus to be someone he was not born to be. I think that the ultimate temptations in life are not those that push us to do the things we know we shouldn't do or that we don't want to do, but to be people we are not made to be. That's the temptation. We're tempted to sometimes look the other way when we see injustice happen. We don't want to get involved. We can be tempted to not speak up when we hear someone disparaging another or even ourselves, to just let it go. There's a temptation to expect ourselves and others, our church, our business, our schools to be perfect. There's a temptation to seek the extraordinary, to live on the edge. When really often ordinary is good enough. Our ordinary lives are holy. There's a temptation to be less than we really are. To be less than what God has made us to be. The great temptation is to be less than who we can be. God calls us his beloved, that we are loved and forgiven. We are accepted just as we are. And when we live into that true self, to be the body of Christ on earth individually and communally, then we allow Christ to live his resurrection life in and through us, making more of us than we could ever be on our own. Each of us unique and original, just the way God created us to be. But there are temptations everywhere both to do the things that we know are not healthy or that do not help others, and the temptation to be less, to be less than. So how do we cope with temptation in our lives? I think there's a few steps that I find helpful. One is to recognize temptations for what they are, the tendency, the trap of being someone other than who God created us to be. The second is to remember whose we are, whose family we belong to, and we belong to God. When I was a child, maybe a teenager, and I was out doing something that I probably really shouldn't have been doing or maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a small community and often I'd meet someone who would say, you know, I know who your parents are. They expect more of you than this. We all do. We belong to the family of God. We are known. So I think there are some things that we can do once we recognize temptation for what it is, the trap to be less than we can be, and we remember whose we are, that we belong to God. 
the things we can do to practice dealing with temptation is to center ourselves in our relationship with God. And that often begins in prayer and meditation. Perhaps it's with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Although I think so many of us often say that and that in the back of our mind, we're saying, but maybe I could flirt with temptation a little. There's going to be no harm in that. But we know that what grounds us is centering our lives in God and keeping ourselves in a position to be in God's presence and to be accountable to one another. That's why groups like AA and Narcotics Anonymous and other support groups, groups of friends that hold one another accountable for living into the life that God is calling us towards. Together, we struggle to grow in grace to grow, not to be evaluated against our faults, but to know that we are forgiven and loved. But sometimes we act kind of dumb. There's a great cartoon that I like. Remember the old Calvin and Hobbes cartoons, the comic strip? Calvin, the little boy, and Hobbes, his stuffed tiger. In the very first Calvin and Hobbes comic strip, Calvin's dad is working on his car when Calvin walks up with his safari hat on and says, so long, pup, I'm off to check my tiger trap. I rigged a tuna sandwich yesterday, so I'm sure to have a tiger by now. His dad looks at him and says, Hmm, tigers like tuna fish? As Calvin walks off, he says, tigers will do anything for a tuna fish sandwich. The final frame shows Hobbes, the tiger, hanging by his foot from a tree, munching on a tuna fish sandwich. The tiger Hobbes says to no one in particular, you know, we're just kind of dumb this way. We're just kind of done that way. We take tuna fish when we could perhaps have something better. And when we act kind of dumb, that's when we repent and ask God's forgiveness. We learn from the experience and we begin again for our God is a God of grace who understands temptation. So, happy Lent. I know some of you are thinking, what, happy Lent? I mean, for many of us, Lent is a gray grind where we're trying to walk the minefield of our lives without being blown up by the landmines that seem to dot the landscape. Because if we're living, we're being tempted. But what about, instead of thinking about just getting through Lent, we look at these next 40 days as a time of looking around and seeing that our ordinary lives are quite holy and full of grace. This doesn't need to be a time for beating ourselves up over the temptations we have fallen for and the places we have fallen short. Now let's instead examine our lives and our hearts and see the beauty in the ordinary dailiness of life around us and know that God is with us and for us. So, happy Lent. And now, let us pray together. Jesus, you who walk with us, hear the prayers of our hearts. 
and be with us as we say the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen thank you for all the ways you bless this church for the ways that you show love to others and now, let us sing along with Claire. Amen.